Welcome to the Wedco Podcast, where wedding wisdom meets street smarts. We're dishing out all the tips, tricks, and wedding goss to take your wedding to the next level. Time to ditch the formalities and get this party started. Yeah! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Wedco Podcast. I'm Togger. And I'm Joel. And we're at the beautiful Old Dairy Mulaney. And today we have Mitch on the podcast with us. Hello. How are you going? Lads, thank you for having me. <laughs> it's an absolute you, pleasure. <laughs> Always followed your work and, and love what you do. So honored to be on and to be, uh, I suppose, on the back of so many incredible wedding vendors today Yeah, for you guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank Pleasure. you so mate, much we'll, for coming up, mate. Like, pleasure. Yeah, as soon as I contacted you, you're like, yep, let's do it. Like, yeah, stoked. Like, it's just so good to have people on that are just super excited to come yep. on and have a chat as well. Yeah. Um, well, so, the stoke yeah. that came from you was yeah. epic. Yeah. That's what we want. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and I think that comes from like, I'm, I, like I love weddings, you know, seven years now in the industry and it's still kind of all I think about and, and always trying to better what I do in that regard. So yeah, to, to have the podcast now, especially for, you know, potentially future brides, but also more for vendors yeah. um yeah it's it's a really cool pod really cool platform yeah. so now i'm keen to see where <laughs> yeah. it goes yeah for, for sure well do you want to introduce yourself a little bit more and you know like talk about the studio and everything and go from there yeah sure so as you boys said mitch from mitch virtual studios uh we offer photo and film based on the sunshine coast but serve the southeast queensland and interstate and been lucky enough to do worldwide um been in business now for seven years um started primarily as film and then kind of when COVID hit, it was such a thing of like, well, we only allowed five people at your wedding. So it's celebrant photo film and, you know, you got the bride and groom. So it's like, yeah. we need a package deal. We need something that we can offer. And it just kind of exponentially grew from there. I think we did, you know, in that first year, 10 or 15. And then last year, or, you know, 2022, it was 30. And now it's kind of more in that 40 range of photo and film. And then we just oh, right. offering photo or film yeah. in those other gaps. We usually cap it at around about 50 a year. So yeah. Crazy. And that's yeah. a lot. You and your wife? Yeah, just yeah. myself and my wife. Chelsea um, would have loved to have been here today. We just had a beautiful little girl six weeks ago. Uh, Chelsea. <laughs> thank you. So she's doing her thing, being an incredible mother. Yeah. So uh, just have me today, face of the business. And we kind of we'll settle with second best. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I've got nothing to do with the behind the scenes. You've just, just got the name I'm just the face and the name. And we always joke about, you know, the virtual in the Mitch Virtual Studios being her last name. So that's where she gets the in. But yeah. um, we kept it as this because if she ever did need to pull away, it would just yeah. still kind of be me so yeah. yeah yeah okay and so she's coming like what's the plans moving forward at the moment as far as like most of them still being um photo and film yeah yeah and so we're still offering moving forward photo and film for everything yeah um it's just we're pretty lucky right and you guys yourselves have kids and yep. so it's this kind of really cool balance of like we can be there essentially monday to friday exactly. and it's like yep. that one to two days on the weekend where you can outsource the help of grandparents to be able to come in and help. So um, we're just kind of charging along. We don't want to know what it's going to look like, but yep. um, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. That's it. it. Yeah, yeah, literally just heading into the unknown. Amazing. And like, that's it. Just like once you have kids and it's just like being able to go to a wedding, like when my, my wife and I used to do it together and you'd go to a wedding and you'd, you'd sit down and have dinner together. You're like, what is this? Yeah, like, you know, like, like a mini date. Yeah, I literally haven't done this <laughs> in ages. Speaking of that, it was the first time I think I saw on either yours or Gamba's uh, Insta and they set up you and Chelsea at dinner and I was like, that's sick. I like they because I think there must have been the DJ wasn't there or something like that and they set you guys up for like a little private dinner. I was like, that's awesome. Yeah, we love those guys. Shout out to Gabs. We, uh, <laughs> it's our second home. We do about 25-ish there a year yep. and um, yeah, we love those guys. But yeah, no other vendors for that evening and so the girls set up like a little candlelit dinner yeah, in, so the, in the room for us. It was awesome. I mean, we didn't even have kids then, but it was still nice to be able to do that. Don't ask me why I know that. Yeah. <laughs> Insta stories. I'm just Insta jealousy stories. shit. Yeah. <laughs> like a wish my wife saved. is shooting. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that together. Yeah, we, yeah you let's can do it. Yeah, we, we do make it. A bit of bromance. <laughs> Hell yeah. Epic. Um, I might actually kick Go it off. Yep. Um, we had we put out to our followers. Yes, but uh, I'm a little bit nervous. Hey? And uh, hit up uh, three of them. Three followers. Yeah, well, three followers. <laughs> <laughs> um, for some questions. So, uh, funniest thing that you've captured but couldn't use? Oh, that's always a tough one. You know, you get asked these questions a lot of like, what's the worst thing or what's the the thing? I, I think it's got to be more or less in the the realm of like someone getting their kid off at, yeah. at, at the D floor and, and not being able to like, hey, include that or... Put so, your undies back on, mate. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And someone takes Eagle Rock a little bit too yeah. far. <laughs> it's like, that's not what it was designed for. So yeah. that, that's probably got to be the, the the where it goes. For yeah, sure. Right. For yeah, sure. Yeah. You just say that for your own like OnlyFans account or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just selling this wedding footage yeah. in the Dark or whatever, <laughs> like shit you can use if you don't want it. Just like stock photos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> stock <laughs> sto story blocks. Yeah. Yeah. Not sponsored. Oh, if you want to sponsor the podcast, yeah, story yeah. blocks, you're more than welcome. Um, 
How would you describe your filmmaking style? Oh, it's a good question. It, it has really evolved over the years. I think um, Chelsea would always attest to this. I'm like a, a real sappy romantic at heart. Mm-hmm. So the story has always been for me about the couple. Mm. Um, and that's for first and foremost where that kind of builds from. Um, and over the years, that's gotten more and more intense with like inspiration from, um, you know, Maru films. I met was lucky to meet Remy at a film camp down south a few years ago and just listening to the way that he talks about the couple and that story. Mm. Um, but I suppose, yeah, that that make that's that story element being wholly and solely about the couple and the intensity of that romance and and we have the saying honest real messy love as yep. to like where we love our couples to kind of really come from yeah um so that's where i try and base the foundation and you know a lot of it is that's kind of slow cinematic yep um trying to keep that story like really about them yeah yep. For sure. I feel that's interesting. Like at the moment, if there's so much um, trend moving towards, I'm definitely kind of shoot similar, but there's so much of a trend moving towards like it's all about the party and the event. Yes. Um, yeah. And and it even comes in where like, you know, most couples are only wanting 15 or 20 minutes for portraits now. For sure. And I remember when I started, like we were having like an hour and a half, two hours photo sessions. Yeah. Well. Like the couples only cared about that photo shoot. Yes. Whereas now it's like, oh no, like we'll get some nice photos, but we just want to hang with the guests and party. Yeah. So it's interesting like... I feel like it's evolving that way that there's not going to be that many people really focusing on what you're focusing on at the moment. For sure. And I think it's very much a niche in that area. And like, I was just checking out Wonder and Follow this morning, like a few, a few of your vids and like, we, I feel like we have a similar style in the music choice and that dramatic element that we're trying to achieve in the films. And yes, the, the movement towards and that switch of like, the, our wedding is a party and that's what yeah. we wanted to display to people is f- yeah. f- like far and beyond of what we're used to seeing. Yeah, for um, sure. But I think it's cool. Like, you know, sit within a niche of filmmakers that create that intensity of around your story and that's why you came together. So yeah. No, yeah. I love that. Oh, it, it's, it's interesting to see like the wide dynamic of, if we're just talking filmmaking in the wedding scene, yeah. it's like you've got the, I'll just say it, you've got the really slow, boring, tacky stuff it might niche down to someone, but like I personally don't like, I find it super boring, can't watch more than 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the people that like pour their absolute heart and soul. And like we were saying just before was like the the people that are just videographers, mm-hmm. just cinematog- cinematographers, like their like their film is just like so far the other way. And it's it's funny how wide of, array, of an array that is between everyone sitting in between that. Yeah. Um, how, like, do you, was it always the goal for you to, uh, like, I don't know if you, like, did you start out, I don't want to say tacky, like, or slow, or did you ever start out like that and it kind of evolved into something? Or did oh, you always, like... Absolutely. You know, I think, without a doubt, you know, you look back at your past work and it's course, absolutely <laughs> cringe. Um, but, yeah, I, th- I think I definitely started out slow and tacky. And then... You, along the way you find inspiration in others yeah. um, and you know sculpting with time I think is a really great mm. um, hybrid of like that really fast pace and that slow cinematic like romantic and I trying to grow in this last few years about like trying to emulate some of those and like I'll, I'm going to put up a film the Savo and it's you know that first grab and social media has kind of really done yeah. the dash and I think mm-hmm. as to why all these wedding films are becoming so fast paced yep, because yep. unless they're attracted within that first seven seconds, they're not watching anything. Yeah, yep. exactly. Um, so yes, I did start out definitely just command S was the shortcut <laughs> I created for myself, <laughs> slow everything. Yep, yep. Um, but along the way, you know, trying to create that story and getting that, that narrative about the couple and, and without dialogue, you know what it's like, you don't yeah. have a film. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, which I'm finding I'm working on a film at the moment. It's quite hard because it's lacking in that dialogue. But um, yeah, definitely started tacky and then just finding that inspiration and moving through to be able to be where I suppose we are today. Yeah. And like I was even watching a film yesterday looking for like inspiration for like our editors and stuff. And I think it was at the, in the first 45 seconds, it was seven song changes. And it was just like simple, Whoa. like it was like, you know, super like almost background, I was saying to Steve earlier, it was like, it almost felt like you and your wife are sitting in the lounge room with like the record player in the corner and you're just like having a wine late at night. And it was almost like that vibe. And then it cut to something else and it cut to, and it was like, wasn't jarring or anything. It wasn't like mood changing. It was just like setting like this atmosphere and then the video, like the visuals to go with it, like nice and slow and cinematic. And yeah. I was like, dude, this is like, you feel like oh, you're on a real journey. And I was watching 45 seconds and I was like, dude, I am locked in. I want to watch the next seven yeah. minutes. Yeah. And then you get the other ones where you're just like, next. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think like there's to, to whoever that film was, that's incredible to be able to 
transition so, so much. It was, yeah. it was Salt Media. I'll give them a shout out. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> I love those guys. Love them. Um, but yeah, and to be able to transition and do that throughout and and not it be jarring and to lose audience, audience interest is yeah. so yeah. good. Yeah. Unbelievable. So. Yeah. And do you have a, if you could only do one, do you have a preference over, yeah, film or, or uh, photos? <laughs> it w- it, film will always be my baby. Yep. Um, it's where I started. It's the passion that I had. I, I think as you would know, photo is just way easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Less sure. equipment, yeah. less everything, less <laughs> time. With a satchel bag, Literally, yeah. you can edit a full gallery in Look one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, cameras everywhere, right? Like it's not it's not easy and, and audio is the bane of our existence. And yeah. I think I've listened to a snippet on the pod before about, <laughs> you Joel know, talk about Joel it. Celebrants. Joel <laughs> bloody bitching. It's all he does. Celebrants PA systems. Yeah, but if they don't have one, they've just ruined my film. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. They've like yeah. taken away everything. So yeah. then I've got five different audio forms of backup. To be yeah. able to try and achieve something for this couple. Yeah. Um, we had someone come through on the pod, a videographer from maybe Newey, and they were saying like how they literally take a PA system with them. I was like, it's like, a, yes, yeah. but I'm like, that's a big commitment. It's such a huge commitment. Chelsea and I did tie up, to, toy up the idea about three years ago, buying a Bose PA system, yeah. you know, yeah. the classic that all the good celebrants have. It's yep. just yep. an easy quarter inch out. Yep. But then now you've got three cameras, audio equipment, yep. batteries, tripod. everything. Like my tripod bag is as tall yeah. as I am. And like it shouldn't, like again, like as a videographer, you invest so flipping much money into gear. So much. ND, like an ND filter costs as much as someone's PA system. Literally. Yeah. So it's like why should like we put so much time, effort, energy and money into our craft and a, I'm not trying to badmouth <laughs> a celebrant or anything but like you're there for 30 minutes yeah. and like we dealt with one on the weekend. She'd been doing it for many, 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 yeah. many years and, it, and she knew that her line out was just the RCAs, yep. which is the worst. And then they were like, if you jiggled them a tiny oh little bit, God, the static, like you're static. Pissing, yeah. And you're just like, cool. Like we still got the audio, but like sure. we know it's not going to be usable. So then it's like, we've got to come up with like alternatives to fix your, instead of you just going and spending $500 or a thousand dollars on a good PA system. I, I think that's the thing, right? It's a thousand dollars is your outlay. Yeah. 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 We, Ours is what minimum yeah. 20, 20, 30? 20 yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I, got, I got a kit. Like it's my not, SD card costs that much. <laughs> each SD card is six hundred dollars <laughs> to be able to record what we want to record yeah. in. So I think that outlay and is like just pay that money. Yeah, and you're also providing a better quality service for the couple oh, for and sure. for their for their guests. Exactly. exactly, and that's more the point. Is like I'm not bitching about like what we've got on bed. I, I'm I'm a gear nut. I flipping love spending yeah, money. Yeah, we don't need yeah, half the stuff we got. <laughs> yeah, but it's just like I don't know. My 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 end goal was just like, why do we not all just invest in the couple? Especially if it is your full time gig. Yeah, and honestly, even if it's not your full time gig, like For sure. it's someone's wedding day. Yeah, like they get to do it once. Just. Yeah, do a make it nice, job. right? Just do a good we, job. We had a three and a half just hour drive and he was job. bitching about this on the way. <laughs> three and a half hours. You but went to the trip home. <laughs> it's so hard. I, I'm going to buy one so he can't bitch about it. <laughs> and even like big venues that exist oh, now. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. It just yes. across the yep. border. Yep. No yep. line out. Yep. yep. Reception. We're not allowed to even. Like, And the the ceremony line out, it's, yep. it's not usable. Yep. Uh-huh. So oh, it's like, like, it was actually funny. I'm going to say this. It was funny that the first time I brought it up, you can figure it out if you want to. The first time I brought it up, someone then commented on the podcast episode uh, to our Insta and was like, it's funny that you bring this up, but the very venue that, that you're sitting in doesn't allow you to touch their PA system. And I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. And I, I think that's why like, we have such an obsession, not only with the venue, but Gavin Bar as well. Like yeah. oh, as, a, as a venue, to me, they're at the top of the list Le- because they down. treat the vendors like actual guests. Yeah. But then as a videographer, you plug your PA system in, like your recorder they're on in. Walkie talkies and like your yeah. line You've check. got a line out everywhere. Yeah, yeah. You just leave it and go for the yeah. day and you're stoked. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they're leaps and bounds above anyone. Take yeah. notes. <laughs> <laughs> um here's Steve's controversial one. What What's do you that? wear to a wedding? Yeah. No, no. Only not, be, not, not, not you. you. <laughs> only because like, uh, do you do many photo weddings by yourself and not do video? Uh, I, I, probably like five a year. Okay. Like okay. you, it hasn't happened so much often, but like when you rock up and you're the photographer and you're a lead and you're looking good, you've got mm. your boots on and everything. Yeah. And then you got a videographer that's got some boardies and like a t-shirt with a print on it. Yeah. Like, Dude, what are you doing? Yeah, literally. <laughs> but it's like, I just understand how we're just going to bitch this whole episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> Mitch is like, I might leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so this is going to be a nice episode. Yeah. Hey, look, I love throwing the shade as much as the next guy for, and especially as wedding vendors, like we see it all right. We're and throwing shade, but yeah. it's education. Yeah. 
That's and it's justify. just like it's in that it is your like you said it, it is education. It's like if we can all bring that level up, yeah. And especially in the southeast Queensland market where you have Sydney and Melbourne that are charging yeah. thousands of yeah, dollars man. more than yeah. what we are. Well, that's yeah. why I fly to Melbourne so often. It's it's worth going because down because it's yeah. worth the financial yeah, yeah. investment, right? Um, and if we can all elevate, mm-hmm. then as an industry we can all come up. But if you've got such a disparity between the top being, you know, let's say, could we charge five and a half grand for a ten hour package for film? Yeah, and then you've got a two thousand dollar videographer that yeah. just rocks up in that, but they're portraying themselves as. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Professional that, wedding it's, videographers. It's yeah. like what, what couple can, you know, we can see the difference in the work, but for many, maybe it's yeah. not as obvious. Yeah. Um, I'd like to think it's obvious. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, for sure. Um, what, so no, what, it wasn't, do I don't, no, I don't actually need a literal answer, but like <laughs> we just, maybe, maybe even to like brides and grooms, like maybe should they, like, they should let their vendors know, hey, this is what we're wearing. Yeah. And yeah. This is kind 100%. of a standard like, of I've what we I've definitely had need. it at venue, at, at wendy, weddings and it's only ever at, black tie weddings mm-hmm. that they tell you, hey, this is a black tie wedding. Yeah. I'm like, cool, I'm going to dress to that. Uh, uh, yeah, appropriately. appropriately. For sure. Whereas normally I'd rock up in something like this. Yeah. Pretty I mean, well dressed. Which... I'd put boots on, not vans. Um, but like that nice linen, you know, you look presentable. Yeah. Normally trim the neck beard, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you don't have a kind of weird necks growing. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just surprising how many people we rock up to and, you, and yeah, they're just in a t-shirt and shorts and you're like, what? Like this is someone's wedding. Like I would never even think of it. And some people just don't yeah. think of it. Yeah. <laughs> and to the credit and like shout out to Michael Kelly and, and Sam Franganese, those yep. boys. Yep. They kind of like for me when, you know, I'd say five years ago now, you know, it was a few years into the business. It was a printed tee, yeah, which yeah, I yeah. gag to even think about now. <laughs> but, you know, they were wearing a suit jacket. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you see that on social media and what bride's not going to be like, wow, he looks good. Yep. Exactly. Like why wouldn't I book a dude that's going to blend in with my guests? Yeah. yeah. And I love what you said. Like we had a wedding a few, a few last year at a country property and she sent the color palette through what we could wear. So oh, I, I wore sick. a green suit to her wedding because it was part of the color palette and she, she was stoked. So. Yeah. Amazing. It's it's almost like I remember like I was in sales a bunch of years ago and it was like dress for the job that you want yeah. or something like that. And I was like, makes sense. Yeah. I guess just some people weren't in sales. <laughs> <laughs> um, now on a little less, on a lighter <laughs> note, um, how do you make sure that couples are calm and relaxed in front of the camera? Yeah, it's a good question. And on we always meet with that. We meet with every single couple that inquires with us um, just to make sure that we're the right fit for them as, as for we are for them. Um, and we talk a lot about that there and then about not everybody's born to be in front of a camera. Yeah. Um, and it's quite intimidating if you've never been in front of one to be in front of one or on the case of a wedding day, it could be two or three. Yep. Um, and so it's more about um, getting our couples to be able to interact with each other um, and provide direction where necessary, but we're definitely not going to try. I would say our style has evolved yep. in the last very much so 12 months to be For a sure. little bit more editorial. Yep. Um, so there is a little bit more kind of like direction involved as to what our couples would like, but our couples that are booking that now want that. So yeah, they're yeah, expecting exactly. that. Expecting it. Um, but I would say that interaction piece and, 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 little things like well, i got a speaker on me the whole wedding yeah, yeah. for like location shoot and yeah. we just got a playlist of some tunes just going. some fun music and just some of that romantic stuff to really set them and you can watch a couple on a wedding day and ch- if i forget my speaker it's not charged and chelsea's like wow well today was a little bit off what was the go and it was like well you can tell that the couple wasn't as mellow and they weren't getting kind of vibing and, and enjoying that as much as they should have been but yeah um just getting the couple to interact with each other and, and music i think is a massive one for sure yeah makes a big difference doesn't it? as soon as you got the bit of shootings happening and everyone can yeah. just relax a little bit and then every now and then you get the red gem where the couple's just like so in love with each other yeah, yeah. it yep. just doesn't matter yeah it doesn't you're matter just what's shooting on. and yep. you, you fill an sd card yep. and it's like yeah, this literally. is sick because you're just frothing the whole time 100 like, percent. <laughs> yeah literally literally you just can't stop recording and then like you like you talked about before you know a, a, a a photo shoot used to be an hour, hour yeah. and a half yeah. and that was kind of the norm and now yeah. it is very much like we're squeezing as much in. It's like, well, you can't expect quality yeah. Yeah. if you're not yeah. willing to kind of take that time. Yeah. Um, and it was just like, I remember Luke Middlemiss and I just like at One Tree Hill years ago and this couple were just like so intense with each other and it yeah. was like pitch black. And Melanie Man is calling us like, where are you? <laughs> And it's like, we, I don't care, man, because this couple is just loving life yeah. and yeah. we're just getting the goods. So it makes a big difference. Yeah. Do you find your like your price point um, like there is shift towards like the editorial at the moment? Do you think that is more like definitely the price point you're at? I feel like more people would be looking for that style. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and like I think if you were to look on socials over the last twelve months, you kind of do see that little bit of a shift. Yeah. Um, I, I love 
that style and that kind of wedding because it does feel like the timeline of the day is very, uh, it's a little bit more structured and usually mm-hmm. like we work with Alicia Bridger events a lot oh, and awesome. she's, she's incredible. Yep. Um, and like those days just flow nicely. They, they feel like they knit together. Um, but on the flip side to that, I would say that I'm finding that our couples lose the chemistry because it starts mm. to become more about the flowers yeah. and the dress and those elements than it really does about them. them. Yeah. Yep. Um, which is kind of funny. It's like an irony that in my business that I really want this passion and romantic element, but I'm also now having to get a kiss from these two and it's just like that weird fish kiss. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like, I don't know what to do here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, absolutely. Yeah. is like that price point definitely seems to mix in with those couples that are willing to spend that that money on the flowers and those elements that is just like, I'm almost feeling like now the photo and film side of things is we are the cheaper part of their wedding day yeah, compared yeah. to those other elements. Yeah. I'll, I'll go into, we are talking about yeah. it a bit earlier as well about like there's, you know, also everyone's always talking about like the luxury market. You know, there's always a point where like mm. where photographers and videographers want to get to. Mm-hmm. Um, Joel and I have talked about it before where if you're a sole photographer, like always the best are going to be like, I just do photo. Um, we just had Evelyn on and who was a hairdresser and she's like, she's amazing. I, I just do hair. She's incredible. like, I'm not trying to be the best makeup artist and hair, just hair. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's probably only the last three or four years where there was that shift where same thing, we'll lose weddings if we're not doing both. Yep. Yes. And also I feel like referrals used to be a lot more common. Mm. Whereas now it's still, even now after COVID, everyone's still like mine, 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 mine. Yeah. Mm. Do you think it's it'll shift back or do you see yourself shifting back to I just specialize in photo or video? What a question. Yeah, that's um, good. That's a big one. And Sorry. I, I suppose to unpack that in so many different elements, you're 100% correct. Yeah. The demand now is for a company to offer both photo and film and if you yep. don't, I'm finding that couples just, they then ghost you. Yep. Um, so then it's like, well, to offer the single discipline is difficult yep. because, and we kind of had this conversation with Jessica Churik recently mm. around like there's so many videographers now offering photography, yep. but then there's also many photographers now offering videography. Yep. So the referrals, yes, they're yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. drying up. Yep. And it, it's almost like if you have a, a photographer that is at a certain level and you feel like you're on par with them, it's almost more of a let's do a collaboration yep. to be able to continue the work and then you're referring and they're referring. So it, it is very difficult. Absolutely. Mm. I feel like the, the whole industry is changing and I'd love to consider uh, moving back into a niche and just being like more specific to one discipline. Yep. Mm. But like you said, that work is now, feels like it's fizzing, fizzling yeah, up. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's harder and harder to be like, I'm not about like, you know, I'd love to just do video, but yep. come, they don't want that. They want yeah. both photo and film. Yep. Yeah, someone's told them in the in a, a wedding blog somewhere that you yeah. have to get a company that does the one. Yeah, so and but, like there is definitely elements on the day where I notice, considering that I offer both, where I've rocked up to weddings before where I'm the videographer and typically photographers kind of lead the day. Yeah, um, and you kind of just there's no real collaboration mm. or there's not really that oneness, and so it definitely like in my mind, it makes sense to hire that one-stop shop like if if someone's booking me or steve like they know that you know we're rocking up with our crew that already know each other you know you guys as well like you're not going to rock up with some rando you know never worked with and you yeah you know what i mean um but then also that probably comes back to like i guess the the elite of the elite if you're an elite photographer and elite videographer you probably got that mutual respect for the craft the craft yeah yeah like the position that you're in and stuff rather than I've probably only dealt with that mid-range kind of low end. Yeah. And and it is tough too when you are coming in as a solo discipline and you're working with another photographer, be it videographer, whoever it is, yep. and they don't have the ability to be able to take direction or, or you know, yep. give direction even. Yeah. Uh, sorry, give direction is more the point yep. around. And then you end up being the lead as yeah, the videographer yeah, yeah. and it's like the couple's expecting this thing but – the, they're not going to get it from the photographer yep. yeah. and you you know it's not going to happen unless you step in. So yeah. it's really hard to then challenge that status quo of like, well, yeah. now I'm taking lead. Yeah. Um, and Chels hates me for it all the time if she second shoots for me for film because yeah. I just take over Yeah. because I'm like, I know what I need to get yeah. on a wedding day. Yeah. Like if you don't take over, and you're not going to get it. No. Nah. 
And and not only that, the timeline's just going to continually spiral yeah. out of control because yeah. we've now, you know, 15 minutes late to ceremony, ceremony's gone over, congratulations, mingling has happened and that's taken an extra half hour. And so now your photo shoot is 30 minutes and yep. it's cloudy. So the sun, the light's yep. gone. Yeah, yeah. So yep. you, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, and I would hope that anybody potentially watching this, brides, grooms, whatever, yep. mm understand that when you're paying this premium for a wedding vendor, mm. yep. you're not paying it because they've just thought of a figure and they're yeah, hoping exactly. that you'll pay for it. There's years of experience behind yeah. that. And when they go to another videographer that charges two grand, you're not getting the same yeah. product yeah. and you're certainly not getting the same quality on the day. Yeah. And then I would hope, you know, post-production and et cetera, but um, it makes a big difference. Yeah. So I personally, I would love to move to one discipline again. Yes. But also I feel like, the only way to do it at the moment is to be the very high end and like I'm not there. And so it's like, that's the only thing you can do is just like drop down and then yeah. just, just like focus solely on that and try and get up to that very top bracket. Cause that's the, the mid market. It isn't there anymore. No, it's kind of gone. No, yeah, hundred percent. And and then you, know, you need double the bookings. Well, yeah, that's exactly. it. You need yeah. double the amount of work. And so yeah. now you're a videographer that does forty weddings. Yeah, a year. yeah, exactly. You know, it takes you however long it is to edit a film. It's certainly a lot longer than photos. Yeah, for yep. sure. And you've got to now try and take eighty. Like it's physically impossible. That's yeah. one a week. Yeah. And that's not achievable for any human being. Yep. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you're hundred percent correct, and that's why I think like this market that we're in now with the photo and film offering. Yep. It's you can kind of sustain yourself yeah, yeah, and, and you can definitely be able to, you know, take the 50 a year yep. and you're comfortable in that. Yep. But to be able to, I'd love to, I, I would, I think I would, you know, as our family grows, um, I would love to just move back to just video yeah, for sure um, and be able to hopefully be in that kind of, that luxury market is where yep. ideally where I'd love to, love to be. For yeah. sure. But in Southeast Queensland, it doesn't exist yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I was going to say even before was like it's tough on the coast or sunny coast, that kind of thing. Like if you went to Melbourne or Sydney or yeah. something Does like Brisbane that. have that market or you don't? <laughs> Not really, man. Oh, we, we lived in Brisbane for the last seven or eight years. Yep. Um, and there's a couple of like bigger venues, um, but it's funny to then try and get into a luxury market within the Brisbane area. I think mm. there's a lot of these studios that do offer the photo and film. Yep. And they're getting that work. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And the other element to it as well is a bit funny. It's like if you're, for instance, because, you know, like if you do a big Greek wedding, often yep. they've got a lot of coin and they're happy to spend. Yeah. But unless you're like a specific Greek photographer yep. or videographer, yeah, 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 yeah. they don't want to talk to you. So that's another tough element to that. Yeah. Yeah. For so sure. That's fair. Yeah. Have you done a bunch? Of Greek weddings? Yeah. No, I've done like maybe two or three. Yeah, cool. And they're so much fun. Dude, they're sick. They're so much fun. I think my third wedding ever, like when I was first starting out, was shooting, second shooting for Steve. And I was just like, what the? Nah, dude, the Jewish weddings, they're the best. Are they? Oh my God. It's just dancing the whole bloody time. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, it's like you go back to an Aussie one, your Aussie wedding. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) DJ. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But then you can see why on those, you know, those cultural weddings, you have to have that price point because the days, and they're not 10 hour days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just did a a Vietnamese kind of Chinese traditional wedding and that was 18 hours. Yeah, okay. It was insane. We started at four o'clock in the morning for hair and makeup at her, but you know, like that was a it was a luxury wedding. Yep. Um, they actually hired out the entire Fortitude Valley Music Hall for reception. Oh, it, was, wow. it was gnarly. It was sick. And you charged two grand for that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had bodies and a t-shirt. Look, yeah. reflecting on it, I definitely didn't charge enough. But um, yeah. that does seem where you've got to go for sure. Those yeah. cultural elements in Southeast Queensland, in that area, to be able to be in that luxury kind yeah. of element. Yeah. Are you on? Uh, okay. Are you on? Do you like how much of your? Um, business marketing comes like are you on any like directories guides magazines anything like that yeah it's a good question um no we're not on anything um i would say everything that we're fortunate enough to kind of have built the relationships that we've built is just recommended vendor list for venues beautiful um which is amazing and i think that's why we do so many at gabin bar yeah um but you know to be here it's at summer grove and and millennium manor and and the valley estate and some of these really really lovely venues Mm. um is where we spend the majority of our time like in terms of investing in those relationships um very very early on in the business yes we're on a few different directories but it was kind of like you know you'd get the one or two and it would pay for the 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 bill for that year yeah um but it wasn't where your main lead source came from and then i think we switched very quickly to take that marketing budget and move it into social media where at the very very beginning i feel like where it was starting to be really worth your while yeah and so we were pumping kind of paid advertising through there a lot yeah and so that kind of lead generation was a very large split to be through instagram yeah 
And that's where we built our platform. I think Facebook died a long time ago. And yeah, you can yeah. see the numbers yeah, yeah. from our Instagram following versus our Facebook yeah. following. Um, but that's where we kind of really prioritize what we wanted. Um, I, I think though now it does seem to be a shift almost back the other way. Yep. A mm. lot less is coming through Instagram and it does seem to be more either word of mouth or venue. Yep. Um, and, and those kind of directories because I think a lot of people are moving towards those. Yeah. It's, yeah. Are um, you, you guys listed on any directories? No, like I used to, like I shot in Melbourne a lot yeah. um, and I made like a conscious decision where I was like the whole time I was living on the Gold Coast and Byron, I just like all I want to do is be home because it was like every single weekend sure. I'd fly to Melbourne, fly back home, it sucked. Yeah. And yeah. then like I made the conscious decision that I don't want to do that anymore and it's so hard to get an inquiry and be like, no. like And, you, and like you know you're going to book it and be just kind of throwing away this money. Yeah. Um, and I had same thing. I had four wedding venues down there that I'd shoot five or six every single year. And it's, it was just the same. Like I never got anything at all through Instagram. Yep. It was always through, it was like, there's some weddings where it's like the seventh of that friendship group, you're shooting their wedding. Yep. And, and then like, the, it's just when people book a venue, they have X amount of dollars, you know, they can afford you and yes. it just all kind of ties in. Yes. Um, so yeah, a lot of, early on, a lot of mine was all with venues. Yep. Up here, I still don't have that. Um, not like I've put no effort into it. Sure. But it's it's definitely for me, I'm not good on Instagram. I'm not good on social media. So it's like why bother trying when there are other people that are so good at it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it's definitely that side of things is where I prioritize. Yeah. yeah. And I, de- I definitely don't consider myself good at social media and especially <laughs> having a kid now. I'm like yeah. I post once a week if yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Um, so it's kind of I always say it's like the bit of the bane of the existence in the yeah. business is like having to be so on top of things on yep. that side of things. Um, but very he- early on, we were definitely onto on, it for yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, I had another question. This is kind of uh, going in a different direction. As far as client delivery, mm. um, we talked a couple episodes ago about like CRMs and how good it is, how we can kind of have automated emails go out to our clients. Yep. And I actually had a bride right back. Do you use oh, like a CRM? A, like Studio Ninja yeah, or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah cool. Studio Ninja obviously yeah. for everything. And then uh, like in terms of the photo delivery and, and photo and film weddings, it's all through PickTime. PickTime, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Like she was saying in her experience, she found it really annoying because um, and she used to kind of sent off an inquiry, got the exact same, you know, email back from 20 photographers or whatever, kind yeah. of not customized or anything like that. And then eventually who they ended up booking with, they're super happy with photos and everything, but they would send out questionnaires that like nothing at all was personalized. Right. Um, and so like the, the photographer knew they had no bridesmaids and groomsmen, but they're still getting questionnaires. Like how many brides and groomsmen do you have with a minimum of one and sure. stuff? And she was sure. like super frustrated. So I was trying to like explain to her, like you would probably, you know, how many inquiries you get a week and so many of them are just like, prices please yep. or like hey we're getting venue like we love your stuff can you send through collections it's hard to say invested yes. and you kind of only put as well this is me i only put in as much effort as what they're going to give me 100 percent. um i don't know do you have a perspective on that i just yeah uh, look I, I completely agree with you and i'm I, i'm falling the same boat for sure if you get an inquiry that's like prices please prices and availability mm. yeah you get a, a standard response back yep. Yep. because you've taken no time yep. and you're obviously in the very, very early stages of planning and you're yep. probably going to get it. All you're going to do is look at the, the price yep. and you're not going to worry about yep. anything else I have to you say. You haven't looked at my so work. The, you're not like, dude, this is the sickest shit ever. There's no yeah. point. There's yep. no point. But then you get a bride that's like, I've followed you for five years yep. since you did my friend's wedding. Yep. Yep. Absolutely obsessed. It doesn't matter what the cost is. Yep. This yep. is my date. Can you please come? And it's very much then like, yes, I'm because you've given me yeah. yeah, something. Yeah. I, I want to be really personal and make you feel like you've had a good experience. Um, but you know, like that's obviously the opposite end of the spectrum for the yeah. the intermediate ones where they're just saying, you know, prices, availability. We're getting married at this venue. This is our vibe. Yeah, yeah, I definitely feel like I'll put in a, a bit of effort to be able to say or at least acknowledge what they've taken the time to yeah, write. To write. Like, yeah, yep. black tie event, amazing. That sounds like such a sounds cool different. vibe for your day. Um, you know as with everything I say, we'd love to jump on a call, yep. make sure you're the right fit for us and we're the right fit for you. Yep. And then I'll either see if they get a, a, a booking or a, you know, like a, a, a chat yep. kind of link come through through Google to say, hey, yes, they've booked a time with you. Yep. If they haven't, I don't typically chase that. Yeah, okay, yep. yep. So I'll just kind of leave it at that. And and I probably could be better. And Chelsea's set up all this automation in the back end that I really, honestly, I'm so terrible. Sorry, babe. I don't use it. <laughs> um but I, I should be better at that. Those little things. She just sure. found that out. She's like, "What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where's all this lead generation going? Um, we're getting so many inquiries and not." Yeah, but. yeah. I was trying to explain to this bride. I was like, "Look, we have 
um, you know, we have a canned response essentially. For sure. Um, but then we will definitely fill in little parts like, yeah, we're getting married here. Cool. We're going to write something nice about that venue and where you are and everything and personalize it a little bit. Yeah. And we just feel like, I just kind of want to give it a shout out to other vendors. Like if you're buying the email templates online, yeah. just personalize them a little bit. Like yes. do, do something sure. because yeah. there's going to be so many people that bought that the template. exact same one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and they yeah. haven't changed a single word. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can buy responses. Oh yeah, like full template kits. I just went how, on. I just chat GPT something and tried to customize that. So yeah, okay. good. How yeah. to film weddings, sell them, for instance. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah like full mm-hmm. packs that you yeah. can buy around. Like yep. this is exactly what we say to our couples. Yeah. And yep. the other element to that is like they're an American market. It's very yeah. different yeah. to us. So why would you not change things to yeah, be able sure. to suit the climate? Climate. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm just, just terrible with words, and I mean all of it. But I'm just terrible at like convey. I'm like I'm way better at speaking. Yeah. Rather than sitting down and like. I almost write as if I'm talking to you. So then that sounds really unprofessional. Yeah. And then, yeah. And but then also as a rebuttal to that, like I definitely fall into the slip sometimes when you're like, sounds bad, but like when you've got enough work yeah. and you're like, yeah, yeah. just send the, the inquiry back. You're just like, yeah. And like, yeah, I'd, I'd take that wedding. It's not like I don't need it. No. But also I've got you're enough good. and I'm like, it's okay yeah, if I'm I miss happy. it. Like, yeah. 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 So sorry if that was me. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she's Look, sick. I think the wedding, and you talked about it before about like people squirreling all this work. Yeah. The wedding industry as a whole is so freaking huge. Yeah. It's not like there's not a not a amount of work for everyone to go around. So yeah. it's like if you haven't put in the effort and you don't need it, yeah. chances are someone does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they're working hard to get it. Yeah. So it's like we've even having that conversation with um, a celebrant a few weeks ago and she was like new to the industry, this is her third year and she was just like, um, you know, if you're not putting in the effort, new people like me coming in, we're going to kick you out of the way. And I'm yeah. like, hmm, fair yeah, point. Which is actually pretty scary to think about because yeah. you're like, I'm, I'm, I know my stuff. Like, yeah. I, so, like yeah. I'm good at what I do and I take a lot of time and effort in, into the, you know, the work that I have. But also actually you were saying it uh, previously where you were like, uh, if you're not putting, like you're busy right now. Yeah. And then if you're not putting in work in the business here, then you're going to kind of drop off and you kind of go into that. Like, yeah. And you definitely notice those peaks and valleys, don't you? When you you feel like you haven't put the effort in on social media and you haven't, it's like a tap. I feel like every time you post, it's like inquiries come through yeah. and you stop. Yeah. And yeah. It's like it starts to dry up. <laughs> Steve noticed that all the time. He was like, he doesn't touch social media. Yeah. And then he posts. And then he like tags the venue. The venue will like reshare. Yeah, he's yeah. like, dude, I just got four inquiries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh. like funny how that works. Eh? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> he does it for a week and then does uh, it touch for six months. Like, yeah, yeah. Rosewood Estate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like, quarry, 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 quarry. I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> uh, let's switch it up. I feel like we've given nothing to brides and grooms so far. Yeah, cool. Um, well, let's talk about a run sheet. <clears throat> let's yeah. go there. Um, okay. That's so- a great topic because I feel like as photographers and videographers, we have a fair bit to do with their run yeah. sheet and like yeah. the flow of the day. Heaps. Heaps. Do you have, okay, um, do you have a set approximate time that you would kind of send, spend with a bride and a groom for, for prep? Yes. So yeah. with when you book with us or I suppose when you, you're like we're starting that process, yep. um, fr- from the very early onset, it's like we want to be as part of your day as much or as little as you want us to be involved in it. Yep. Um, and we do have experience, right? 50, 50 a year. So it's yep. like we know That's how what? the day flows. Yep. Um, and so when it comes to that timing element, we try and have our hand in the pie as much as possible. Yep. Because if we can help with those timings, we know the entire day is going to be more enjoyable for the couple. Yeah. Because the moment you start to run behind and things get a little bit stressful because inevitably it will yeah. and you're not able to enjoy it as much. It, it's just when it takes the experience away for the couple. So yeah, yeah we have a, an email kind of template or run sheet that we send through to the couple yeah. that has those timings of what we would like to achieve yeah. with them. And, and like that 10 hour day is usually like an 11 p.m. To 11 a.m. till 9 p.m. Yeah. And we yeah. can, we've worked it out. So we kind of have our formula. Yeah, yeah, so yeah for sure. Speak. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like saying, you might've been saying when you first began, like I remember being there for so long just because- yeah. And I feel like back when you used to have like two hours of bride prep, it would run behind because you've got so much time. Yes. Whereas you end up having like an hour and you're like, and you it's game it. on from when I go to then and it just all works so much more efficiently. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's it's kind of can be a trap having too much time there. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And because you end up fluffing for 45 minutes just yeah. to get this one epic shot of details. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And now she's ready to go and we've only got 20 minutes yeah. till we need to leave for ceremony. And, you know, we've got 30 minutes set up time as a videographer to be yeah. able to get cameras and audio. Yeah. Yep. So it's like you're running behind. So it's constantly being able to like adjust those 
time yep. and that that kind of idea to the couple of like this is what we need yeah. and to be able to enjoy that and for you to enjoy your day is really the most important part of it. And yep. that's why we're wanting to have so much kind of input and help with the run sheet and those timings elements. Yeah. Yep. How long before you have to leave to ceremony, how long would you want that bride done and in her dress? Yeah, so within um, our run sheet, and we were talking about this kind of off camera so it works out perfectly when we're here, <laughs> um, within kind of that we, we ask for an hour. Yep, perfect. Um, your hair and makeup, we send through kind of an email for them to ask to forward on and it's like got a time in there that it's this is kind of a bit of a deadline yep. for hair and makeup to be done. Um and we do obviously factor in a little bit of leeway there. Yeah, yeah. There is a one hairstylist yep. on the Gold Coast. I'm not going to name names, but <laughs> she does. She doesn't get the emails. Yeah, we can, go through the junk. I can guarantee it's more than one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we we do ask for now because you know what it's like. There's so many more elements to I suppose bride prep because you can get yep. there. We typically try and spend an hour and a half with the bride. Yep. And that first little bit is capturing details and then capturing kind of like candid moments around yep. the hair and makeup and yep. bridesmaids and laughing and, and kind of yep. doing all that. And then once hair and makeup's done, it's like, okay, we've now got champagne with the, the girls. And robes. We've got robes. Yeah. Yeah. We now need to get into our dresses, which can take five minutes, but it yeah. also does not usually. Yeah. <laughs> and then so, you know, shots with bridesmaids. We're doing a first look with dad. We're doing all yeah. these different elements. There's yeah. so much to bride prep. Yeah. yeah, You need the time. And if you don't, you got to sacrifice elements. Yeah. yeah. And that is ultimately where we don't want to see our brides yeah. having to sacrifice things yeah. they wanted to do. Like they might have, like the first look with dad might be the most important thing. Yeah. yeah. But we yeah. now can't do it yeah. because your hair and makeup artist has taken an extra 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And we've just run out of time. Yeah. yeah. And because we've got to be, this, you know, the venue 30 minutes prior it might take half an hour to drive there. Yep. Yeah. You got to set you up just, your own PA system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Literally. <laughs> but like even, even like, again, like I know we shoot on, other company no but like we we talk about hair and hair and um, makeup artists and stuff like that but mm. also even like parent like people around oh, you that are there on the morning like for sure your mum could just be a stressful person and just adding yeah. pressure where you don't need it and yeah. it's like less people with the better but also they also create atmosphere which is also good for so sure. it's like trying to figure out like, like that balance three three extras something yeah like I, th that. I think yeah yeah i'm gonna say three just have three people there with you That's yeah all. yeah, yeah. Like and, and if you know that people are going to be a little bit more high stress yep. on your wedding day. Yeah. Just ask them to arrive. Like if you know that dad is typically late because yeah. yeah, you yeah, want yeah. to do a first look, yep. tell him to get there 20 minutes before he's meant to get there yep. so that we're now able to do your first look. Yeah. You know, little things like just removing yeah. those people or telling them times yep. that's really going to help realistically your flow. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I just remember doing a first look with the dad in like cargo shorts and a singlet because he just, he rocked up and we're like, dude, like we don't have time. Bro. Why are you not in his suit? We're, the wedding's in 14 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's what, hectic. What, even regardless of the first look, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And I think that the key element to like the photo and film side of things is like so much of our day in the entirety of the day is relying on other people. Mm. Yeah. So we're just relying on people to be able to be able to do their jobs effectively so yeah, that yep. the flow and out what we need to get for the bride and groom, yep. which are the, at the end of the day is those memories that they will have forever, yep. which is like you would argue the most important element yep. of the day to be able to relive it. Yeah. We're relying wholly and solely on everyone else. Yeah. So it's – it and trying to be involved in that run sheet so that we can then set expectations for other vendors yeah. – and, and not in a rude way. Like I'm not totally. saying that we, we know what the go is yep. and I'm, you know, you don't know how to do your job, but if you, if you're bound to be a little bit slower, if, or if you've got 15 bridesmaids, yeah, yeah. bring some help or start earlier. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I can, I can say that because I'm not one, but <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to get hate face. I'm sorry. <laughs> I still just remember like the same thing when I was first starting out on a second shooting wedding for Steve. Um, and we did one, I think it was a, it was a Christian wedding of some kind. Yeah. Um, and the, we thought like most ceremonies go for about 30 minutes. Sure. Uh, this ceremony went for two hours and like we were Remember just, that? dude, we were like Stress. passing out. Like Stress. we were so, oh. like, but it's like the flow on from that is like, cool, you get no photos yeah. of like the, of you, you and your partner. Mm -hmm. Like because you still want to do those family photos, especially like a big, I think that was a Jewish family or something yeah, like I think that. that. was Greek, yeah, yeah. And so it's like they're all just family orientated. So you like still want all your family or you might not even want the family photos, but mum does. Yeah. And so like you still smash out all those and it's like there's, like you said, there's those sacrifices that you make. Yeah. And like if we knew that it was a two-hour ceremony, we would have been like, hey, maybe bring it forward. Let's start two it. hours. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And and knowing that as well and, and being, and that's why that conversation we have like kind of two months out with our couples about the run sheet. It's like, well, that's 
great. I know family photos are super important. It really, really is. Yep. They're important for other people. Like how often do you walk into a house and a family photo is hung up on the wall? It's yep. not. Yep. Um, so it's like, well, hey, can we do them at reception? Yeah. Because we know we're going to have a little bit of time baked yeah, yeah. in here and there where we can, in between speeches, we can call people up yep. Yep. and we can do family photos there. Yeah, for sure. And then I feel like, so you're kind of more in, you are in like a higher end market for sure, like the weddings that you're doing. Yeah, yeah I'd like to say so. Um, sure. Do you see any trends coming through there at the moment? Um, like, you know, there's a whole um, having your bridal party sit back down, having no bridal party, like mm. anything that you're seeing pretty regular on weddings at the moment? Not like not specifically. Um, yep. I feel like only recently I've seen a few like the wedding is just about us so everyone else can sit down. I've done a, f- yep. done a few of those. I feel like it's more an adjustment to the things that were standard that are now and not. So, you know, like the cake cuts no longer. If it is, it's like done a different yeah, way. Yep. So, yeah, it's a good question. Not not specifically that I'm noticing and at least not up here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. One it, thing I heard recently that I'd like to say, I think it's sick. Actually, it might have even been you that told me that whereas instead of like, you know how you normally you got bride and groom or, and so instead of you kind of normally have like bride's parents sitting on her side, groom's parents sitting on his side. Yeah. Well, like swapping those. So they can look so at then each like other. then like mum can look at the daughter. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. that's it. Like I haven't done one, but I think it was you that told me about yeah. it. And I was like, that makes so much sense. Because yeah. then you're seeing your daughter's face. Yeah. You're seeing your son's yeah. face. Yeah, and exactly. So the side of their head. Yeah. And then yeah. you can look at your mum and be like, especially if you've got like that really deep bond with your mum yeah. or your dad or something. like. Yeah. I know Jay Flood, um, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Surfing Celebrant, Nusa Celebrant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he does that for the, yeah. for his couples as well. Yeah, like gets gotcha. them to be able to look at their their respective yeah. son yeah. or daughter. It's I've been seen it with like the bridal party as well, and you can swap the bridal party over. Yeah, so right. then bridesmaids are looking at the bride oh, as well. Yeah. yeah, awesome. I think do it. <laughs> <laughs> Mix it up. <laughs> Hell yeah. Do it, yeah, because we're talking on the way up. We're like with the sunglasses, like the love heart sunglasses. They're kind of on the way out. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like it always, it always kind of filters down a year later. The same sure. with like fashion and everything like that. Yeah. So yeah, just trying to see what we're looking at for the next year. Coming yeah, up. I'll be interested. <laughs> I mean, we've only I, I said one. We've done one. We haven't done it. I was at the birth of my daughter for that one. So we've got Michael Kelly to jump in for me and help out there. But yeah, I'm interested to see what this year brings in terms yeah. of trends and and things like that for sure. Yeah. So like when you talk about you're saying you're quieter, forty is still pretty crazy busy for everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's yeah I feel across the board like a lot of people are quiet this year compared mm. to next year yeah are you feeling the same shift where people are booking really close or a year and a half out I feel like in the first kind of pre I feel like the wedding industry has two different chapters is pre-covid and post-covid yep pre-covid and on the film side for sure because that was more of the offering we had it would be like a six months out yeah you'd easily get an inquiry for a wedding day yep. Yep. and it, you'd be available for it yeah um covid changed that dramatically because everything got pushed and so the vendors got booked out more frequently yep. and and because of the postponements people were moving and it, it really jammed that whole period up i feel like now easily 18 months yeah okay event, especially for for the photo side of things every now and then you get the odd inquiry for Hey, my, my wedding's on Friday. I, I don't have a videographer. I've got yeah. some spare cash. Yeah. Like, do you want to come and do it? Um, but yeah, definitely on the photo side for sure. 18 months easy. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. But Stan is probably 12. Yeah. Yep. And are you, are you going to Europe with every other Australian this year for uh, <laughs> summer? Um, I did that last year. Yeah. Um, we were fortunate enough to do a couple of little shoots, kind of like engagement so, shoots, mini shoots over there with, yep. with three couples, which was epic. Um, but no, this no, year we've got a little, little, little baby. So no, <laughs> it'll be a little bit quieter. We still got a bit of travel around. I got a couple of weddings at Hayman Island and oh, yeah, here and there. So got a couple in Vic. So yeah, yep. Sick. still be a bit of, bit of movement, but yep. not as crazy. Yeah, okay. It's enough. But Two yeah, hour flights. Uh, I definitely am over and I'm ready to see the end of we're in Europe for 2024. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Come over for it's sure. It's so hard though. Hey, because like, I'd do it. Oh. <laughs> but also at the same time, like I don't want to do it. Yeah. I just yeah. want to be at home. Yeah, to the fam. Because yeah. how hectic is taking your tripods with you <laughs> internationally, yeah. and then your ca- your carry on luggage mm-hmm. weighs yeah. twenty five kilos, yeah. not seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, please, because you got every Hopefully single no camera lens on the sixteen layers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's in a backpack, so it doesn't look heavy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're dying. <laughs> it's such a glamorous looking lifestyle. But yeah, it definitely is work for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, like definitely the destination wedding is glamorized for sure. I yes. mean, like coming into the industry six years ago, I was just like, dude, that's all I want. That is Mm -hmm. sick. You've made it when you've done it internationally. Yeah. yeah, I went and shot his wedding in Italy and I, I literally remember sitting in my bed and breakfast. I think it was the night after the wedding or something like that. And I was like, Oh, and I I legitimately cried on the phone to my wife. Cause I was like, I like, I just miss you. Like, why are you not here? Um, and I didn't want to draw around us. Yeah. He hated me. So (laughs) 
<laughs> I was so disappointed. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just like you're sitting in your hotel room. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like, remember watching Dan O'Day like when I first got into it and, you know, he was traveling everywhere. I'm in New York, I'm here and here, yeah. here. And I remember just seeing like an Instagram post about saying like how lonely it was. And then you start to understand like, oh, yeah, you're in all these amazing places by yourself. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah it's it's tough. Well, because, you know, the, the couple hasn't paid for your partner to come with you and mm, then yep. all of the money you've just made on this probably discounted package, yep. let's be honest, yeah, because yeah, you're sure. trying to make it desirable for them as well as for 100%. yourself. Yeah. Is gone. So yep. at the end of the day, they don't end up making you any money. Yeah, they are cool because you get free travel. Yeah, um, and they're definitely fun to do for sure. And then you just hope that it's a portfolio piece. Yes, like, yeah, and, yeah. It, and it books you more. And then inevitably, people are going to be able to do yep. that. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've been fortunate enough. UK, um, Hawaii. Sweet. Oh, awesome. Um, Vanuatu. Yeah. Philippines did an insane one in the Philippines. Yeah. So, so. Do you market for that anymore, or for now you're like? Australia's we, cool. okay. We've never marketed for it. I think it's always just been Aussie couples going over and doing an yeah, international cool. wedding and they've liked our stuff. So they want to bring an Aussie vendor over because it's easier in terms of like language and things like that for sure. Yep. I've never marketed for it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Your craft, do you use gimbals or handheld? Yeah. Um, so I, this is something I'm always trying to change mm. within my work because I found for so long and when I first started, it was just 1DX 24 to 70 on a gimbal all yep. day. That's all I did. Yep. And sure, you're getting difference in variety on focal length, but other than that, you're getting the exact same thing every time. Yep. And so I've tried to be really conscious over the last few years to really change that and I'm yep. always looking for new gear and new equipment to be able to give me a different look or make me excited to be able yep. to be yep. film on the wedding day. So at the moment I run a uh, FX3, usually 24 or 35 on a gimbal yep. um, for most of the day. And then on my hip I have uh, A7S three with a uh, tilt shift, 45 oh, mm lens. I just love that look. Dude, it's that's... so soft. It's so romantic. I've seen a lot of people trying to like do it digitally and I tried to do it digitally for so long. Yes. And I hope I don't see too many more tilt shifts start popping up around here. <laughs> Dude, it's hilarious you say that because I was analyzing your films the other day. Uh, yeah, nerding out over them. And I was like, oh, shit, he's shooting a lot of tilt shift. And yeah. I was like, I genuinely wondered if you were doing that because, yeah, you can do that in like um, Da Vinci and whatever. Yeah. And I was like, I wonder if he's actually – because that's, that's not easy on video. Uh, it, no, well, it's funny. It, it is easy because your focal length is no longer a plane this way. It's a yeah, plane up true. and down. So it's actually, it is easier in terms of focal, focus. Um, but I got and full credit where credit's due. Luke Bickley shoots the entire I've day. I've with Luke before. Yeah. He only yeah. shoots on tilt shift. Oh, true. Yeah, 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 yeah the yeah. entire thing. So um, I got the inspiration from his look because I tried to emulate it yep. in yeah, yeah, yeah. the post, but yep. it just never looked the same. Yeah, the same. Would, is it? It can't be. So there's no Sony tilt shifts, is it? Do you have to use no, an adapter? No, it's a Canon with a da adapter. 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 Yeah, 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 Canon sick. 45 with an adapter. Awesome. I love that. Yeah, I, I shot with Luke four or five years ago, and it was yep. the first time. And then like I didn't know who he was, and I saw his film after. I was like, oh man. Yeah. Especially because he was rocking around, and like he had a sick camera and everything like that. But he was very just like he didn't care. He's just like moving he around. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. like he didn't. You know, he, he does his own thing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you like see the film, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah he's, his work's beautiful. He shoots on a red, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. On a Nikon now. <laughs> he just got bored. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm always trying to change the gear and um, find new equipment that gets me excited. Like yeah. I'm, I'm the worst for it. I, yeah. Rumors of a new FX3 this yep. year. You guarantee you'll be buying it. <laughs> <laughs> and it is because like you'll get a certain shot and you're like, this is sick. And yep. you see some like cinematic like gimbal move and you're like, whoa. And then you're like, are you going to yep. do that? And then you're like, I really wish my handheld party yeah. shots. And yeah. so you're always kind of moving. Yeah. And and I will spend probably 90% of the day on gimbal and then just like bringing that yep. tilt shift out to be able to get a, a nice blend of it. Yep. Um, but I, I will say that like the, the handheld has definitely – feel like it, it is more popular. Yeah. Um, but I'd like to think that I do stand out because I do have those really kind of like cinematic movement yeah, yeah, in yeah. my films. So yeah. yeah. And that's like you said, you are trying to stand apart anyway. You're not trying to follow the trend of what yeah. everyone else is doing. For sure, yeah. for so. sure. And that's why I feel like I haven't tried to, um, I suppose, buck the slow cinematic, like real intensity of your story. And, and I've tried to stay in that. I will say I have definitely changed the edits mm. in the last kind of 18 months to yeah. be... Uh, a little bit more grabby, but having the intensity there and yeah. having that cinematic element to it is is probably the most yeah. important piece. Uh, what's like, obviously that we're in the era of like film. Mm. Um, we're obviously seeing that heavily in the photography world, but we're also seeing that heavily like with the Super 8s and stuff yeah. coming in. Yeah. Um, thoughts? 
I I think uh, like our vision or what we stand for is timeless romance yep. um, and we'll always just continue to just stay digital yep. um, because I think, you know, when you look on that super, like we, it goes in ebbs and flows like yeah, the sunglasses yeah. we talked about. Yep. It's really, really cool and I see people doing it all the time. I'm like, man, I would love to do that. Yep. It looks beautiful. Yeah. But it's so, a, it's so much more work. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. To be able to do that, yeah, and it costs money. Costs money. But yeah. B, I know that in ten years' time, that was a phase, and they're probably going to look back at that and be like, "What is this old grainy shot?" When I know was we it? had four K <laughs> yeah. cameras that could be crisp. Why is it out of focus? Yeah. Literally. <laughs> so and and like that's you know that I think that goes even with the photography side with the whole blurred photos. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. You know, like and we do them because couples ask for them. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was speaking to a photographer on the weekend and he's like, dude, I'm over direct flash photos because yeah. everyone <laughs> asked for them. But like, yeah, but there, there uh, was what's happening. Right? Yeah, exactly. So you just, you, you kind of go with the trend more because if you're not doing it you're and not posting it, you're going to be left behind. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, but I know that in 10, 15 years time and my mother-in-law, every time I post a blurry photo, it's just like, focus. do you know it's out of focus? <laughs> like, are you meaning to do this? Go check My mother-in-law does it too. <laughs> She's like, it's out of focus or it's blurry. I'm like, oh I was like, that's it's, the, art. That's, it's <laughs> art. It's art. Yeah, exactly right. For sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we're pretty much at time, which is hectic. crazy. That's hectic. Do you have, is there any hints or tips or anything like was, that that you want to give yeah. to some brides and grooms? Mm. I'm trying to think of what avenue can we go down. Um, like, is there something that you do on a wedding day just to, I don't know, like help tie the whole day together? Like, is there little nuggets that you do that, yeah, just make someone's day just effortless or just easy? I think, look, across the day, I'll, I'll try and go above and beyond always where I can, yep. you know, getting things, fluffing the dress for them, teaching the bridesmaids how to fluff the dress so that yep. it looks nice. Um Excuse me, but the I think the biggest element for me and, and why I say that our style is very much that romance is mm. that I will always tell a couple that your entire day you'll be surrounded by other people all yeah. day. There won't ever be a time where it's just the two of you, even on location shoot when it's the two of you, there'll be myself and Chelsea or yeah. whoever's around. Yeah. But really soaking that time up and, and really taking the time to realize what you've done because mm. at the end of the day, like are you, are you all married? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Do you remember much of the wedding day? Little bits. It's like Lo- location shoot. Little bits. Location shoot was sick. Was yeah, which is yeah. sick. But <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It, right, it's a blink and it's yeah, over. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I really always say to my couples, like, it's you'll blink it and you'll be sitting at reception yeah. being like, where the heck 100%. did that day go? Yeah. Um, so I really try and be intentional within that location shoot time. And that's very much our style to really like just be together, yeah. soak in that moment, have a look at the sunset, take that in. Yeah. Yeah. But I yeah. guess that goes back to when you were saying, you know, you and Luke Middlewest were chilling out at uh, One Tree Hill. Yeah. Like, you just kind Rest of being in, in the moment rather than, yeah, <laughs> we, we spoke about that on, on another episode. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just like being in that moment and just like, again, you still have your style, you've got your, what you kind of want to get out of it, but it's also being aware to that moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. For sure. Awesome. And li- like this whole, you know, the, the movement towards having the party side of things yep. and you can still have your whole day completely ball out and yep. you can party as hard as you want with your bridal party reception in the morning, but just really soak in that time together. The yep. two of you, definitely. you've just gotten married. Super exciting. Yep. It's a big yep. commitment. Yeah. And, and enjoy it. Oh, and hit us up when you have a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all no, right. Epic. Well, yeah, where can people find you and all that jazz? <laughs> yeah. So Mitch Special Studios on Instagram, um, mitchbeshelstudios.com.au. And um, hit me up. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on, mate. Yeah, really it's appreciate been a it. pleasure. Legend. Thank you for the invitation. I really enjoyed today. Easy. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Thanks mate. Thanks for tuning in to the Wedco Podcast. We're dropping a fresh episode every week featuring industry professionals dishing out the wedding wisdom you need to turn those dreams into reality. Make sure you are following us on social media. You have those notifications turned on so we can help plan your wedding day. Your dream wedding day just got a whole lot easier. Thanks for listening.